Okay. Okay na. Um so today um we will learn part about intestinal resection and anastomosis. And next next slide. For the introduction, um, we can tell that intestinal resection and anastomosis is the removal of necrotic or infected intestinal tissue and consequent opposition of two healthy intestinal tissues together. Next. For the indications, intestinal um, resection and anastomosis is indicated for irreducible intussusceptions and for removal of ischemic, necrotic, neoplastic, granulomatous, or stenosis segments of the intestine. Next. For the anatomy, the small intestine of fully grown pigs is 16 to 21 meters and weights of 2.1. 2 to 2.5 kilograms. The small intestine is composed of the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum, and therefore extends from the pylorus to the ileocolic junction. The duodenum is the rel relatively fixed, short proximal part of the small intestine. It begins at the pylorus and continues caudally as the descending duodenum along the right side of the abdomen where it is in the contact with the parietal peritone. The jejunum, the jejunum, the longest portion of the small intestines, enters into the formation of numerous coils that constitute most of the intestinal mass and occupy the ventrocaudal part of the abdominal cavity. The ileum is very short, terminal portion of the small intestine. It is readily identified by the anti-mesenteric vessel that courses from the cecum toward the jejunum. The ileum ends by opening into the initial portion of the ascending colon as the ileocolic orifice. The, the mesojejunic ileum is more commonly known as the mesentery. For its blood supply, nearly all, all the intestinal blood supply is supplied through the cranial mesenteric artery. It arises beneath the first lumbar vertebra and anastomosis proximally with a branch of the celiac artery along the descending duodenum and distally with a branch of the caudal mesenteric artery along the descending colon. For its innervation, the nerve fibers to the mesenteric portion of the small intestine come from the vagus and splanchnic nerve by way of the celiac and cranial mesenteric plexuses. So here is a, an illustration of the gastrointestinal um, part of the pig. So as you can see, here is the um, duodenum. The, here is the pylorus, duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. And then... For the preoperative preparation in this laboratory or in this surgical exercise, we made use of the um, intestines of, of the pig. For specimen preparation, the intestines were thoroughly cleaned and washed. washed. Operating room and surgical instruments, the operating room should be aseptic and ready for the operation. Instruments or tools, towels, scrubs, and drapes should be thoroughly cleaned before the day of the surgery. The table should be neat. Next slide. Operative technique. So the first thing that we did was the end-to-end -end anastomosis. Blood vessels to the segment are, are legated and divided, including the connecting arcades in the mesenteric border of the intestine. This, the intestine is transected 
is transected, I mean, in an oblique angle with the scalpel alongside and crushing forceps and the affected seg segment with its associated clamps. So we need the clamps to minimize the bleeding. You start a position with two simple interrupted sutures. The, the first one is placed on the mesenteric border and another simple interrupted on the anti-mesenteric border. Yung yung palang clamps, we actually use them para hindi kumalat yung chime na present doon mismo sa intestine. And also, we need to um to inculcate or maglagay ng C sutures as temporary surgical sutures which are placed during the operation to hold or manipulate the operating area or like para hindi gumalaw yung organ. Next. A modified simple continuous suture pattern is used for intestinal anastomosis using 3-0 chromic cat gut. After suture placement, inspect the anastomosis and check for leakage. We need to check if there is leakage to prevent further complications. In general, animals who suffer anastomotic leaks are more at risk of further health complications and mortality. Okay, this is the picture of our end-to-end -end anastomosis. Next. End to side anastomosis. Start working on the posterior layer by taking stay sutures or Lambert to align the two bowel loops together. Once fixed, make an incision on the associated bowel. Use medicine bone bomb to extend the length of the incision desired. Start the suture using the 3-0 chromic cat gut with a simple continuous pattern. Begin, the, begin to suture the posterior layer using a simple continuous suture and interlock it every third of the suture para masecure natin na hindi maglalamp. I mean, hindi maglilik yung yung mga contents ng intestine. Next. After suture placement, inspect the anastomosis and check for leakage. Okay, this is a, a simple picture for our end to side anastomosis. And the last thing we did was the side to side anastomosis. So we also did a stay suture on the posterior part of the intestine. Incise the two parallel intestines using a blade. Secure the edges by going outside and leaving inside out on the same intestine. Start to suture using the 3-0 chromic cat cut with Ford interlocking suture. After suture placement, inspect the anastomosis and check for leakage. Okay, this is a picture. So the Ford interlocking suture is the significant halatang halata. So next. For the complications, we have first stricture. When we say stricture, it is an abnormal narrowing of bodily passage. So pwedeng mag-narrow yung, yung sinesurgery natin na intestines. Parang ganon. And then next is infection. Next, regurgitation may happen. The he sends kapag hindi na i-close ng maayos. And fistula, when we say fistula, it is an abnormal opening or passage between two organs or between an organ and a surface of the body. Next. 